Okay, so the subdivision surface in the shrink wrap modifier. When do you use these modifiers? Well, if you've watched most of my tutorials, you know you can use these modifiers when you're building a hard surface a model or typically a vehicle, all right? But there can be situations where you don't need to use these modifiers, and that is all up to your workflow and preference, all right? So let's say we have this as your line along which you want to model, okay? So we add in our mesh circle. Let me rotate again like this. And let me just go edge collapse. Sorry for the noise in the background. I just woke up. So let me just press G and Z and then pull this up here, okay? So we have this vertex. We want to model the surface along this line, all right? So what we can do without maybe without using a subdivision surface is to press E. We can extrude this all the way here to each point on a blueprint line like this all the way to the bottom. We can just now extrude. And it gives us the surface that we need. Okay, so what if you don't want to work with this much vertices? Let me just add in the vertex. And if I pull this up here, you want to work with much smaller vertices. Okay, so you want to skip one step each. Okay, so I skipped one over here. I'm going to skip one more over here. Skip one more over here. And skip one more all the way down there. But you, you realize that when you extrude this, it gives you this uh, surface, this sort of low poly surface. This is when you can use your your subdivision surface to kind of add in the uh, the effect that you need. Okay, so right now you can see this is where it is running along. You can see it's running along this side. So all you can do now is to take each of this. But first of all, you might want to increase the viewport up to two, so it makes it much smoother for you. And you can pull this up to about here. Move on to the next one. Pull it up to about there. And finally, this one. Pull it up to about there and you can see you might end up with the same amount of vertices as you did before if you did it manually but it might be slightly higher and uh but it still gives you the look that you need with much smaller vertices you don't have to go through the process of adding in a lot of vertices at these points the subdivision surface will take care of it for you let's say you have a surface like this okay now <clears throat> The reason it would be best to use a subdivision surface and not model manually would be because if you take if you take this for example, okay, so this is your vertex. Let me just edge collapse this real quick. Press G and Z and then pull this up here, okay. So if you model, if you do this by hand, like this, okay, you have your your blueprint and you're modeling over it. Okay. So you do it every step all the way of the way all the way down there, okay. Now, what can happen is if you make a slight shift, okay, in your blueprint, let's say instead of the vertex being here, you move it all the way down to the bottom of the line, okay. So what happens is you can see the surface then becomes flat, which isn't what you're trying to achieve, okay. You're trying to achieve it to be a curve, but since the line is so small, you think you could place it anywhere and you could still achieve what you need, okay. Now, this is you without using the subdivision surface, but if you were not using the subdivision I mean, if you were using a subdivision surface, you might you would end up working with much less uh, vertices, and that means you end up with much less flaws. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but yeah, that's how I can put it for you to understand. So you end up with much less flaws compared to when you work with much more vertices and end up with likely much more flaws. All right. So the, the that is how you that is when and how you use the subdivision surface. The next modifier is the shrink wrap modifier. So the shrink wrap modifier is pretty basic. All it does is it takes whatever vertices it has closest to it and then shrink shrink wraps it onto the target surface that it needs to be on. But you should be careful how you use it because the further away the uh, the the mesh is from the surface, the 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 higher it is going to displace it from where you want it to be. Okay. So for example, if you have a a plane. So right now you can see it's very far from this surface over here. So if we add in a a shrink wrap modifier real quick here, I'm just adding extra vertices in here so it can shrink wrap much better. So if we select the target to be this one, you can see it shrink wraps onto it very nicely. But you can see it displaces it. If we go to the top view, you can see it displaces the whole mesh from where it's supposed to be. Maybe you're expecting it to be right on top of it like this, like very aligned on it like this. But if you take a look, you can see it displays it all the way to this side. That's the uh, problem down the shrink wrap modifier, but you can maybe work around with this. Maybe if you go with project, I don't think project is the answer. Nope. So you can go, you can play around with these uh, values here to help you get it uh, where you want it to be. But the best way to do this would be to take all of your vertices, change this over to the face select mode, and then enable project individual elements. And what you want to do is go over to the top view or whatever view you want it to align to, 
and then press G and then hold down control and you can see instantly it snaps onto that surface and then press enter to snap it onto that surface like that now if you get out of edit mode you can see shrink wraps onto it very nicely so yeah that's pretty much it that's the basic thing and that's all I have for you guys and uh, so that's pretty much it I'll see you guys in the next video so if you came here to see the tutorial you can stop watching right here but I also have something to ask of you guys and uh, I would love if you guys could help me out the thing is I actually had a channel created before this one and uh, it was a gaming channel it wasn't really uh, getting the love that I needed to have so I ended up getting rid of all the videos on there because I want to I wanted to start over again but before I did that my friends recommended that I actually start a channel on blender because i was quite good at it and uh, people would like to see what i make so i didn't want to do it before but they encouraged me to do it so i created the blender channel and everything went smoothly when i started before i didn't have the love that i needed it to but it was something that i loved doing i love really i really loved using blender so i just kept on going creating videos and all of a sudden before i realized i had over a thousand subscribers and uh the watch hours and everything that I needed to have my channel, you know, monetized on YouTube. So thank you guys for supporting me, but I would also love it if you guys could support me on my other channel, which is called One Mile Per Hour, where I play video games that is a racing video games in specific, no uh, other video games, just racing like Dirt and Forza Horizon and Isle of Man, anything involving racing and O2 Sports. Yeah, that's where you. That's where I upload all those videos from. Uh, of my gameplay so if you guys could support me just uh wait till the end i could put the uh the video in the end screen for you guys to see or you can click on the eye icon to take you there right now so you can watch it and i really appreciate your support on that channel and uh yeah that's pretty much all i have to say also if you if you guys if any of you plays uh dirt 4 or forza horizon 4 or black squad black squad is an fps game if you guys play any of those that is if you're on steam and you want to join me in my gameplays you can uh you can just leave a comment below and i will give you my game attack and then we can uh, have some fun together yeah so thanks for watching i will see you guys in the next video